This is about as edge as you can get. Technically known as an eco town. Eco what? Eco town. Eco town. Yeah. But this is an edge, and it does. There is an increase in predation, but there's also a benefit to living on the edge. There's a lot more diversity in plant life, which increases diversity in insects, which is good for the birds. Remember that? Thanks, Please, 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 the nature. That's a hooded man. Ah. What is he? The woodpecker. What is it? Tell me. What, where is he? Oh, I don't know. He's got a squirrel face back. in me. Yeah, I could. Yeah. I see the dead tree. And he uses the tail for all the time. Wick, 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 wick. Wick, wick, wick. There's a growing number of artificial lakes. We have lots of streams, lots of great streams. Uh, but anyway, most of West Virginia is terrestrial habitat. Climate certainly is, is one of the important uh, general influences. West Virginia has uh, it's cold and moderate winters, depending on where you are. If you live in Randolph County, uh, you have cold winters often, although sometimes quite moderate. It's, it's variable from year to year. And as a matter of fact, variability probably is the byword. Yeah, it's really invigorating. Ringing back. This is Mill Creek coming down into uh, the river at this point. And if you look, you can see the seed pods out here that are kind of uh, brownish. <coughs> Composite family. And we're constantly trying to pull that thing out and keep it under control. Ooh. Have you heard of St. Veronica? It's got a little bit of that. Mm. 13, 14 years old. So he's just orange, just as a warning. That's right. Don't, That's eat, don't eat me. Here I am. Don't see, I won't, I won't rub my, my eyes or my face because it, he is toxic. No, that's a lifespan yeah. or something like that. Normally we think of this being high elevation. French botanist by the name of Mike Nall. <laughs> oh, he's a salamander man now. Right now it's... Moist enough out there that the salamanders aren't congregating with it. Call that rattlesnake. Call that rattlesnake. C-A-L-Y-X. From the beer. No? <laughs> There's two different species of Solomon seal. How do you tell them apart? And some people eat them. See? Some people eat anything. There's <laughs> <laughs> another very commonly planted one has seven leaf so that's how you would tell these apart. <laughs> what is this thing? All black, if people call them blackbirds. So, well, yeah, we have you know, a rusty blackbird, a red-winged blackbird, crows are, are black, ravens are black. Great. How awesome. I'm hearing a periola, too. Is the, did you see the periola? I wonder if that's... There's a nest Where right there. Right here. Oh, yeah, right. I'd say you guys are you guys. I think there are three reasons, basically, for, for a naturalist to draw. And the most important is that it increases your power of observation. Uh, you, you have to look at every part of a thing to draw it. And if you draw on a regular basis, you get in the habit of looking at things that way, so you become a better observer. The, the second thing is uh, as a way of taking notes, because uh, a picture's worth a thousand words. That's true. I see two little short ones and two taller ones. See what you see. That one comes directly from the ground. So this is stemless. Now look at yours. You probably have a spur sticking out of the back of that, too. Some are more pronounced. The paddles on this, two stick out to the side, one sticks out to the bottom, one sticks up. They're kind of irregular. They're not even like a petunia.